Hello, my name is James Pallington and I'm the Service Manager at Victory Amplification. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can maximise the performance of your valve amplifier. We're going to be talking about maintenance and, all importantly, how to get the most longevity out of your valves. So before we get into the finer details, I'm going to walk you through the V40 Duchess and each of the valves and their operation and what they do. So starting at the front, on the left hand side, closest to the input jack socket, we'll have a triode, a dual triode. This is actually two valves in one glass envelope. In the V40, we have three, which are all covered by one of these, a valve can. These are used to reduce any electromagnetic interference that can come from external sources, so from radio stations, cell phone towers, just general lighting or heat pumps, and other electronics you'll find around the home. Starting from the far left hand side, we have V1. Moving along, we have V2, 3, going counterclockwise, V4 and V5. V1, 2 and 3 are all preamp valves. In the V40, we use ECC83s, which are also known as the 12AX7. And then we have a pair, a matched pair, of EL34s. The three preamp valves we have here all have different operations inside the amplifier. These give the general overall voicing to the amplifier, whereas the two power valves or output valves drive the speaker in your speaker cabinet. So, valve amps sound great, but there is a caveat. Valves don't last forever. They're quite similar to light bulbs, so eventually they will need to be replaced. Preamp valves tend to last a lot longer than your output valves, as your output valves do a lot of the hard work. So here are some tips on how you can get the most life out of your valves. The first one being, make sure when you first switch your amplifier on, it's in the middle preheat position. Don't just turn on your amplifier at the back, straight into the high or low power modes. Keep it in the standby position and wait about 30 seconds to a minute for your valves to warm up. This will also save your speakers as when valves warm up they can pop and crackle. Transients like that aren't really that great for your speakers. Another great tip, if you're not using your amp for a prolonged period of time, just switch it off at the back. Make sure it's in standby before you switch it off and just flick the switch at the back. This will turn off the amplifier and it will also save the lifespan of your valves. So this might be common knowledge, but amps don't like water. Try and keep the amp in a climate controlled environment at all times. Don't keep it in your garden shed or in your garage. It's not healthy for them. To get the most out of your valves, you want to make sure that when you're connecting a speaker, make sure that your cabinet is connected to the correct output. If you've got a 16 ohm cabinet, connect it to the 16 ohm output with a high quality speaker lead. If you mismatch, this can put stress on the output valves because they'll be working harder, as this is less efficient. Now, there are two common kinds of lead that you'll come across day to day. You'll have your speaker lead, and a patch cable, or an instrument lead. This is what you use to connect to the input of the amp, not from speaker cabinet to the amplifier's output. You want to make sure you're using a dedicated speaker cable. This has got a thicker core, which will ensure that all of the power from the output valves is sent to your speakers. So we also get a lot of questions about handling valves. When you have a valve, try not to keep it loose, try and keep it in the box. If you drop a valve, it could end up damaging some of the internal components. It might not show any signs of damage, but there could be a failure inside and it wouldn't work and it would render the valve useless. When swapping out valves, you don't need to wear gloves or to use a cloth when changing them. This is only usually recommended to protect your hands from the heat. The oils on your skin will not damage any of the glass envelope on your valves as they don't get to that operating temperature you'd find on high power bulbs.
Another good piece of advice for prolonging the life of your valves, if you notice any dust or debris building up inside your amplifier, just give it a good wipe down with a nice dry cloth. Now onto removing valves. Removing valves is really easy, but sometimes it can appear to be quite difficult. If you just pull straight up, you'll notice, especially on some valves, they can be quite tight in the socket. What we usually recommend is a slow, gentle rocking motion in a circular fashion. This will allow the valve to be released from the valve base. Try not to rock it too far side to side or you can end up bending the pins on the bottom of the valve base. To put them back in, we recommend the same thing. Line up all of the pins with all the holes in the valve base and gently push in with a gentle rocking motion. You'll slowly start to feel it get tighter and tighter as you push more into the base. On some occasions, you may need to swap out your output valves. These will either have spring clips which sit over the top of the valve or butterfly clips which sit at the base. Remove the spring clip from the top or if you have butterflies, like on this amplifier, use two fingers and push the outside and then use the gentle rocking motion we mentioned previously. When putting the valve back in the base, you'll notice on output valves there's a keyway. The keyway shows which way the valve needs to sit in the base. If you feel any resistance, don't just try and push it in because you can end up doing a lot of damage to your amplifier. Align the keyway with the keyway in the valve base and push apart the butterfly spring clips gently and then gently rock side to side pushing in the valve. The spring clips will then push back into the valve's base keeping it nice and secure. Mm -hmm.